Hey guys, it's Eric here at Farpoint Farms. Check it out. Today, I've got another one of these lithium ion batteries, these LiPo 4 batteries. This is a beast, 12 volts, 320 amp hours. Let's go ahead and open it up. I'll show you what you get. The company's name is Homasync or Homesync. Um, a little hard to pronounce, no doubt, but it's a beast and it's going to help give us a little extra juice up top. So the uh, battery system I have up there is uh, just a power pack, a very large power pack, but a, a power pack. And what I'm going to do is link this in with it so that as it charges and discharges, it has this relatively massive, and you'll see when I take this thing out here, massive power supply to go with it. There she is. Whoa, is that a big girl? 320 amp hours, 12 volts. Thank the Lord for carrying handles. Now, where could you use this thing? Well, like I said, for me, it's gonna power an actual building or help power a building. But for a lot of folks, the main thing would be to replace a series of lead acid batteries that you have in your camper, right? This is going to replace uh, literally uh, three to four bat. Well, actually, let's do some quick math here, okay? So if you have a lead acid battery that's 100 amp hours, you can only draw that battery down 50%. So we can make that a 50 amp hour battery of usable energy. This is a 320 amp hour battery. And with lithium, you can run those babies down to zero. No damage done. Bring them all the way back up to 100% charge. So in reality, what you're looking at is 600 amp hour lead acid batteries, actually like six and a half and it fits in the size of this. Uh, I'm saying this thing is heavy, but it's still less than 100 pounds. A single 100 amp hour lead acid battery usually weighs in around 70 pounds. So you can do some math there. You're probably gonna get better fuel mileage as well as having a whole lot more compact unit. In fact, if you were looking to upgrade, you could put two of these babies in the place that six lead acid batteries were in and you would have, I mean, 12 times the available reserve capacity. You could probably run an air conditioner for half a day off of that at least a mobile unit anyway. Other places, and uh, and this, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I might be double dipping a bit. I don't want to give away my spring project ideas here, but this is also, it's got a little picture of a boat. Uh, think about the amount of runtime you could get out of a trolling motor with one of these things. Again, the equivalent of 600 amp hour, 12 volt deep cell batteries. That's uh, a whole day on the lake and then some. Now, I don't have a boat right now. I had a little boat one uh, that I traded, uh, somebody traded for me for some work that I did. It was not the boat for me. It was a nice Boston Whaler. Here's a picture of it. Uh, and it was okay. I mean, it was rough as all could be, but I couldn't get a title for it. And it was just such a pain, so I got rid of it. What I'm thinking, however, is a nice 14 foot John boat might be in my future. So I can go fishing at one of the lakes nearby. And I don't care about, you know, going fast or anything like that, but a nice, maybe a 40 pound thrust electric motor and this would get me all over that lake. So I could double dip and I could do it for free because if you hook this thing up to the solar array, which I have that charges it, and I'm not paying for the electricity at all, a free full day on the lake. That sounds good to me. And of course, the last thing it's talking about, solar. This could be added to a 12 volt solar setup, conventional or a power pack like the one I'm gonna be using or it could be the basis of a whole new setup. A lot of people like uh, slide-in campers, stuff like that. This would be overkill, but awesome for it. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll see what else comes in this. But, uh, it's got our two tabs here. They're covered with plastic, but they're nicely marked plus, plus red. <clears throat> so you got that going on. And user's manual here. It does say also 250 amp hour uh, battery management system. And it's interesting on this, it, it's a Bluetooth, apparently. Bluetooth Smart Edition. I don't use a cell phone, so I really can't comment much on that, but that's pretty groovy, I guess, if you're into watching how much battery you have left. And I, I could see where it would be kind of cool, because if you had it in a boat, now I'm thinking I might have to borrow my wife's cell phone when I take the boat out. But if you had it in a boat, and you were cruising all day, and you just wanted to know how much juice was left in this thing, you could use the Bluetooth app to figure that out. So that is kind of cool. All right, and charge discharge curve, I'll show you that. Pretty much 100% charge until, oh my gosh, it's done for. That's how that works. And that's why lithium is so cool. You can get right up there, 95, 97% before you start losing voltage. And you can run it all the way down to nothing and she'll come right back with a good charge. Now, let's see here. Maximum charging would be uh, 64 amps. That's a ton. 
That's plenty. If you were to suddenly use over 750 amps at one time, it would have a smart shutoff. If you are using 750 amps for something, uh, you probably just melted something. It weighs 59.75 pounds, so that's not bad. It was lighter than I thought it was. I thought it weighed about 70, but it, it, it's lighter than that. And I'm trying to see if there's any other notable things here. Uh, charging protection come, kicks in after 23 degrees Fahrenheit. So it will charge under freezing, but not a whole lot under freezing. 12.8 is the volts, obviously. And that's about it. Okay, so it says here to charge this beast. At 20 amps, it's going to take five hours to charge it. I want to make sure I'm getting the right one because they do have several in here. Yeah. Um, oh, at 20 amps, it takes a 16 hours to charge this. At 50 amps, 6.4 hours to charge it. So um, a, a day, a day of full sunlight with my solar array that I have up top there will charge this thing up. So that's, that's about what you'd expect. And that's from dead, like zero, not half charge like it normally would be. Yeah. Uh, it also talks about this, and you can check these things up. This is important. If you're going to add to your system uh, parallel and series, parallel and series, parallel or series, series or parallel, there's a lot of different ways you can hook these things up to get the desired voltage or amp hours you need. Obviously, we can go totally uh, four in a row. In parallel, uh, we can get four to equal 48 volts. And, and then you can do parallel and series so you can have 48 volts uh, if you got four of these you got your 48 volts at uh, two, 320 amp hours but then you could add four banks of those as well you end up with a huge system like tesla sized power bank right there uh, and it's just saying um, not to use it for starting a gasoline engine makes sense lithium is not really designed for that but solar energy home storage off-grid system storage industrial battery solutions i know a lot of people are using these now for uh, like uh, electric uh, golf carts and electric uh, forklifts things like that rvs obviously boat electronics trolling motors golf carts again and nautical emergency backup only thing i would be worried about that is you don't want to get these things submersed if water were to get in there you could end up with a short that could be kind of a bad thing if you were out on the open ocean obviously on a small lake or pond like i'm going to be fishing not much of a concern then it talks about storing it loses less than three percent of capacity per month so and it also says hey try to have it above a 50 percent charge when you go ahead and set that thing into storage so like here this time of year and i'm making this video uh, first week of january um you've got the temperature so low in the, at night that we can't have our solar operating unless there's heat applied to it. So I usually just cut the solar off and the main system that we have and just run the emergency stuff when needed. But so uh, obviously they have a full charge. Now for me, you know, you'll have a day in January, you'll have a day in February, and, and you'll have a couple days in March where temperatures are going to hit 60 degrees. As a matter of fact, today is, uh, is, even though it's January, it's pretty cold yesterday, but today is like 50. Right, so I can click the solar back on, put a charge on these batteries so that they store well while, you know, while sitting until I'm ready to use them again. Usually for me, second week of March, solar comes back on. We run it again until about the first week of December, and then we have to shut things down or we have to apply heat to it, which is, eh, I'm working on a newer system for that. Anyway, kind of a rambling video, as always, with Farpoint Farms. Let's face it, I, I really never get to the point, do I? I'll leave a link to where you can get one of these things, and I will see you next time. Take care.